So, and you mentioned COSO. So for those of our, uh, those that aren't really familiar with it, I want to ask some questions specifically about this guidance that came out in June. So right. it's the Committee of Sponsoring Organizations of the Treadway Commission, known as COSO, and they issued this supplemental guidance in June on enterprise risk management, specifically to address the importance of considering risk in strategy setting processes, as well as driving performance in organizations. In your experience, Norman, uh, is it important for companies to integrate the consideration of risk in their decision and strategy? Why is it important? Absolutely. It is. Um, look, if, if you set off in the wrong direction, you're probably not going to get where you want to go. If mm -hmm. you set off um, in a direction that is unlikely to get you where, where you want to go, you probably won't arrive there safely and on time. So setting the right strategy is absolutely fundamental. Now, COSO has done a good job in emphasizing that part of looking at different strategies is, shall we say, scenario modeling or scenario considerations, actually thinking about, well, if we take this, what will happen? What's the likelihood and extent of achieving the rewards that uh, this seems to um, offer and also what are the mm -hmm. likelihood and extent of the things that might go wrong. Recognize that there's both positive and negative uh, effects and consequences of each decision. So again, this is nothing new. There's not a board member out there that doesn't do this already, but it's providing some discipline and structure to it, which is necessary. So COSO has done a good job of saying, when you're deciding which strategy and objective to, to adopt as an organization, consider all the things that might happen. Where it mm -hmm. fails to me is it doesn't talk, talk about the things that might, that are necessary in order to, to reach that decision. It says, take each option and consider what might happen. But what if the, you don't have good information in order to even identify mm -hmm. the potential strategies? What if you are not involving all the people involved? So for example, um, a lot of organizations don't bring the compliance company or the compliance department into the, the planning process. So they, they decide what they're going to do. See. And then they bring compliance in afterwards, who then have to, if you like, chase the bus and tell them all the problems that they might have from a compliance point of view. So I, th I, I see that there's, if you like, there's risk to the strategy setting process, which, which COSO has not properly included. Another thing, for example, from a board point of view, if I was on a board and the CEO came to me and said, here's our suggestion. This is the option that we have selected as a strategy to achieve uh, 2017, 2018 object, uh, objectives. I would want to know what are the options? Not only the ones that you like, but what do the CEO, CFO and COO recommend that you decided were, were not okay? What are the other options? And a lot of CEOs won't share that with the board because they only want the board to, to see the ones which were their top two or three and perhaps try and bias them to and lead them to uh, endorsing the the CEO's recommendation. Hmm. So I think that there's, there's things that are necessary in order to identify even the, the strategic options. But I, I think all of this is really critical uh, because it does start with knowing where you want to go and uh, identifying the different ways to get there and then deciding on balance which are the pros and cons. Uh, for example, mm -hmm. if I want to come visit you and I'm going to fly into Detroit, I've got different ways of getting there. And some are going to cost more than others. Some are going to get me there earlier than others. For example, if I drove mm -hmm. and, 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 and since I retired, maybe I would take the time to do that. I could see things on the way, perhaps be less expensive, but I wouldn't be able to, to get to you as quickly. On the other hand, if I flew, it might cost more, but I'd be able to spend time with you faster. So there's pros and cons either way. And the discipline that needs to be there 
uh, I think is important. I see. You know, the COSO document talks about that it's, it's essential to consider both the level of harm as well as ups, upside opportunities if risk management is going to be effective. In other words, risk can be either harmful or it can be positive. And that seems to make sense, but I think from what I've read, you seem to disagree on that point. Why do you disagree? So if I think about the decision to come visit you, making that decision does not just have harm and does not just have opportunity. It has both. Mm -hmm. There are multiple consequences. And not only that, but there's a, if I talk about the likelihood and, and magnitude, if you like, the, the, the size of the impact of something happening. So for example, um, if, I, if I'm going to come fly with you and I've got to change in Chicago from San Francisco to Detroit, I can't get there direct. I have to change in Chicago. Okay. Um, there's a likelihood that I might have a delay. And if I have a delay, that could cause me to miss my connection. Now, the delay could be five minutes, or it could be five hours. So there's a range of consequences. Okay, each one of them, each one of those has a potential, has a, has a different likelihood. And, and, and perhaps also the range of consequences um, needs to be considered. It's not, see, COSO seems to treat each potential event or situation although actually uh, they only talk about events instead of events or situations, as if it's mm -hmm. either good or bad. And what I'm saying is one or the other. <laughs> it's, it can be both. It mm -hmm. can be good and bad. So for example, uh, I flew back this week from Tallahassee in Florida after doing a presentation and I got stuck for three hours in Atlanta. Okay. Yeah. Now that was frustrating, but it allowed me to go and have something to eat. Mm -hmm. So there was good and bad that came out of it. Um, I was able to to catch up on on uh, some some writing that I was planning to do. So there's good and bad, and mm -hmm. and again, we need to be able to weigh all the potential consequences in order to make an intelligent and informed decision. So I think that um, is the two things. It's you've got multiple effects of a single event or situation, not just one. Uh, and, and there's a range of possibilities, not just a point. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, they talk about a heat map. Not just a high, medium, or low impact, but. Yeah, and in fact, you've actually got a range. So if I, if my favorite example is, I live here in Northern California, and we have from time to time earthquakes. Mm -hmm. So I like to talk to people and say, what's the likelihood of having an earthquake here that will affect where I live in San Jose, California. What's it like of an earthquake? And they may say, well, it's 5% and it's a 6.0 or 2%, 7.0. And I said, do you realize that there were earthquakes here? And if I look in, my, in this room, there are cracks in the ceiling to prove it. There were earthquakes every day. There were earthquakes every single day. The thing is that they don't necessarily have any impact at all. Uh, or I might have a minor one. It might interrupt my internet connection for a little, for a little period of time as um, some kind of connection or, or wiring or cabling is affected. So the likelihood ranges from 100% of very small to hopefully less than 1% of very, very significant, like an 8.0. So it's a whole range of potential. And COSO doesn't understand that, or they don't talk about that at all. Um, and, and this is very real for organizations who actually do business here in California. How do you mm -hmm. figure out what to do about earthquakes? Do you only plan for the worst potential situation? Or do you take into account all the potential situations where you've got perhaps minor damage and minor disruption all the way up to more significant. Right, so like I said, I think COSO, if I look only at the 
spirit of COSO in the executive summary, it says a lot of good things. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't think it uses language that is clear and meaningful to a board member. Okay. Um, because again, it doesn't talk about achieving objectives. It doesn't talk about achieve, delivering success. It still talks about risk. Um, okay. Let me so get into that a little about, bit. Because one of the things about his own language. And, and if you look then at the body of the framework, it doesn't give you enough detail to actually execute what they say in the, in the executive summary. Okay.